friends welcome to this special day the bandara of the great master azur maharaj baba sawan singh whose picture you can see here he was my master everything i share with you i learned from him this man with the white beard he changed my life and he changed the lives of thousands of other people that i knew that one man can have that effect on so many people's lives is remarkable and he was not a teacher people thought he is a teacher he used to say there are thousands of teachers all over they are teaching the same spiritual teachings that the mystics and the great master has taught the teachings are in thousands of books you can go to the library and see there are thousands of books that you can read and learn about the same teachings teachers are in abundance but a perfect living master is a very rare thing great master mentioned that if you really want to know how many perfect living masters there are in this world in this present age which has more masters than before they could all be counted on the fingers of your hands there is very rare occurrence of a perfect living master a perfect living master has a different way of doing his work his work is to take the marked souls back home to their eternal original home from where the souls all came out our spirits and souls were born out of one single totality of consciousness and the ability to go back and merge in that consciousness lies with the perfect living masters perfect living masters come here they pretend to be teachers they pretend to be teachers because our mind loves to listen to a teacher they are doing this only to satisfy our mind they teach us how to meditate it's just to satisfy our mind they tell us the ritual of meditation discourses things external these are all external things they do to satisfy our mind they ask us to read books it is only to satisfy our mind you can read all the books of the world all over over again all your life you'll get no enlightenment they know it yet they say go and read more books to satisfy our mind each one has a consciousness and a soul and a spirit that is constantly longing to go back home they are not creating a longing for you the longing is already there is the longing of the spirit that makes us feel lonely in this universe we are always lonely we always want to be loved and to love somebody this is coming from the soul from the spirit there is no exception to this rule everybody wants this and yet the mind comes in the way the thinking mind becomes an obstacle the thinking mind attaches us to things outside of ourselves to things that have been created temporarily and those attachments and because of those attachments more desires for more attachments they create a trap around us by which the loneliness of the spirit the longing of the spirit to return home to its own totality to its own reality is lost and we live a life of the mind and not the life of the spirit these mystics these perfect living masters come here to reconnect us to our own spirit to reconnect us and tell us who we really are that we are not our minds we are not our sense perceptions we are not our bodies these are just covers upon ourselves we are wearing these covers in order to have different experiences we generated these covers upon ourselves through our consciousness so we can have different experiences but they do not mean that the cover itself becomes ourselves i am wearing a jacket today to impress my friend mark he is going to take a picture <laughs> he is going to take a picture of me but suppose i start believing i am the jacket it will be a big mistake anything that happens if my jacket gets torn i say i am torn anything that happens to the jacket i'll ascribe it to myself that will be terrible you will all laugh at me but we are doing the same thing to our bodies which we are wearing like jackets our physical bodies are no more than temporary jackets we are wearing and yet we associate all our happiness and unhappiness with what is happening to our bodies even our sense perceptions the ability to have these five perceptions we think our own experiences they have just been made a, an agency an instrument to experience 
the things around us. They are not ourselves. Even the thinking mind, which is supposed to be our own self, a philosopher said, I think, therefore I am, made a big mistake. He should have said, I am, therefore I am, but I have a mind that can think, which would be the correct statement. Mm -hmm. By associating yourself with the mind and then believing that you are the mind, it's just like saying you are the jacket. These are all jackets upon ourselves. Our real self is total consciousness, pure spirit, the ability to be aware, the ability to create, the ability to experience what we create. That's our true self. And we are able to achieve that while we are here through the help of somebody who has already achieved it. What is the definition of a perfect living master? A definition of a perfect living master is one who has perfected his journey to his own himself. And when you perfect your journey to your own self, you find there was only one self. There were, everything else was illusion, was all created. Therefore, you discover at the end that we thought we are so many, so many we are merely an illusion, a reflection of the only one. That's our journey. A perfect living master, by his own experience, is able to help us and take us back home. It's very rare to come across a perfect living master. People sometimes ask me, have you heard the names of these masters? And I tell them, yes, most of the time I have not only heard them, I have seen them. I have, they, some, some of the young masters today have grown up. I've seen them growing up as little kids. One master I saw one hour after he was born, and he's um, a very popular master. There are so many. So when people ask me, how do you rate these masters? Who are the perfect ones amongst them? I tell you, tell you, any master who says, go within yourself to discover the truth, I support him. It doesn't matter how far he has gone or how far he has progressed because he's telling you the right direction to discover the truth, which is within yourself. It hardly matters how far he has taken you because you can only go as far as the master can take you. And each master will take you up to the point where he has himself gone. But if he's taking you the right direction and your seeking is strong, your longing for the reality is strong. You, will, you are bound to meet a master who will take you to your true home. It doesn't really matter. There can be intervening masters that come into our life. Then great master explained. He says, no effort goes waste on the spiritual path. Whatever you did there was a preparatory step for you to come to me. Therefore, don't think that you wasted anything there, neither time nor money. It's all gone into your account. And you had to do that before you could come to me. So this is a teaching that great master shared that when we come across so many teachers, we start our life as infants with our mothers. They teach us. We meet teachers in church. We meet teachers in places that we go for training, for exposure. All those are steps on the spiritual path. Nothing is amiss. We should not feel that we did not find a perfect living master, therefore we are not on the spiritual path. If your seeking is strong, if you are fed up with the experience you are having here and you say to yourself, this is not my place, I want to go to what truly belongs to me, you will find a perfect living master. Indeed, you won't know how to find him. Therefore, fortunately for us, the perfect living master will find you. That's what they say in India. When the chela is ready, the guru appears. They don't say that when a chela is ready, when a disciple is ready, he can find a guru. He says when he's ready, a guru appears. How does he appear? He appears through coincidence, chance meetings, chance knowledge transferred by one or the other, strange little happenings, strange conversation with the person, strange opening of a book, strange telephone call, strange sign on a road, road sign while driving. Anything can happen and make, lead you to a perfect living master. And then you will never be able to recognize a perfect living master. Because a perfect living master does not say he's a master. He does not even act like a master. If you want to talk to a perfect living master and say, are you a master? He'll say, no, I'm a servant of my own master. Great master was asked several times, are you a master? He said, not at all. He said, did Guru Nanak, who's the first master of the Sikh community, on whose name the whole Guru Granth Sahib, the holy book has written, and every 10 masters who who were written and that recorded in that, each one called themselves a servant of Nanak, and Nanak himself calls himself Nanak Das, a servant of the Lord. 
None of them ever claimed. No master has ever claimed. Of course, if it's not a perfect living master, then the ego comes in and they like to claim. Perfect living master don't need to claim. Why should they? They know what their job is. They know who the marked souls are for whom they have come. They know through what process these souls have passed and at what time they have come to them. And they know how to process their cases for going back home. They know how to become like them. Because ultimately, if they are not teachers, if perfect living masters are not teachers, what is their method? How do they take us back home? They take us back home through the power of love. Somebody once asked me to write a chapter in a book. An author in India was writing a book on the spiritual path. He asked me if I can help him by writing one chapter on the method that I learned from my master. I said, I can help you, but it will be a sm small chapter. Maybe one word. At the most two. Said, what is that one word you're talking about which represents the whole of the spiritual path? One word is love. If you want to make it two, it's called love and devotion. That's the whole path. We don't realize that the rest is all for our mind. These perfect living masters, they dra drag us to themselves through the power of love. That's ultimately the love pulls us because love does not originate in the mind. Love does not originate in the senses. Love does not originate in the body. It originates from our spirit. It's a function of the soul. It's not a function of the mind or the body or the senses. Therefore, they go to the source. And since the source is the soul, the spirit, and love comes from there. Even now when you have experience of love, even with all these covers around you, it's still coming from your soul. So the soul is what, you, what is your reality. So before you can discover your home, true home, you discover who you are. If you know you are the soul, the spirit, the consciousness by, per se, without thoughts, without mind, without senses, without the body, if that is your reality, that's a starting point of the spiritual journey. Great master used to say that the Pinda region, which means the physical region, is only a short experience for us here. The Anda region, which is the egg region, or the region which creates the Pinda region, or which creates the reflection called the Pinda region, <laughs> itself has a longer duration, but it only gives us more sensory experiences. It does not give us physical experiences, still gives us a lot of sensory experiences. The Anda region, which is the egg region, or the region which creates the Pinda region, or which creates the reflection called the Pinda region, <laughs> itself has a longer duration, but it only gives us more sensory experiences. It does not give us physical experiences, still gives us a lot of sensory experiences. The causal region, the Karan region, which is the cause of everything, is only the home of the mind. The universal mind creates individuated minds, and all concepts are born there. They get translated into ideas. Ideas are translated into perceptions and so on. But these are all tools for experience. They don't represent us, our true reality. Our reality is beyond this Pinda, Anda, and causal Karan, where Brahma, the creator, resides. Even Brahman, the ultimate creator of all these three regions, he's just serving as an instrument to create experiences for us. That's not where we belong. That's not even a spiritual path. That's the path of understanding creation. 
great master said his path starts from parbrahm beyond the mind and ends in such kind of true home he said unless you first discover who you are that you are the spirit and your home is the spiritual totality of consciousness if you don't go th that far you're not on a spiritual path really you're only moving around in different parts of creation so his path was very clear and he said the best way to pull you there is with your own power of love so what the masters do is that they teach you things to keep the mind busy they you fall in love with them for one simple reason because a perfect living masters love is so different from the worldly love we experience the difference is in the unconditional nature of that love they are never judgmental there is never any judgment coming into how they express their love for you the love is for you whether you are good or bad they are not judging anything they are in great compassion knowing you are trapped by your own mind you are trapped with your own karma with your own actions and reaction to that they understand it they are full of love and compassion for your state in which you are therefore they give you unconditional love unconditional love from somebody who if you get initiated becomes a permanent friend obviously changes your life but don't be afraid of this fact that there is negativity around this is a negative world all these three worlds are negative worlds and yet we have to make progress to that there was a friend of mine a disciple of the great master he went overseas during the world war 2 and he came back and he he was somebody told him during his trip abroad that you know you talk of the five stages of spiritual ascent three of them are of call negative power how come you are worshiping the negative power because the five words you are using represent these five stages why are you repeating this five words you should repeat only two repeat only two words of the top two and not all five words you are you know, only appeasing the negative power by repeating these three words therefore that friend told me he has stopped repeating five words he repeats only two he asked me do i repeat five words or two i said i still repeat five i said not only that i know my master's master my master was baba sawal singh his master was baba jamal singh baba jamal singh repeated five words and the disciples of his own master swami ji of agra told him that look you should not repeat five words we are revising the text of swami ji's bani where he talked of five words we are revising because a new master whose name i'm not taking has said only the top stage should be used for meditation and he said you don't even have to use two stages use only one stage because the top stage has only one name called radha swami they also said that if you go higher up in the highest region in such kind and beyond in anami desh which has no name you will still hear the sound radha swami when baba jamal singh heard that he said do you know there is no sound there do you know there is nothing at all beyond such kind that can be heard touched tasted otherwise it wouldn't be called alak agam anami why would it be called anami if you can speak names there and how can a name be that powerful sound that we are talking of i will stick to five words that my master swami ji gave me only on that basis he was excommunicated from the executive board of the radha swami satsang from agra i am only mentioning historical fact 
that because people have this kind of an argument, we go into these kind of academic things and we forget the real message. I told this friend of mine who had come back from overseas, I reminded him of this story. And then I said, I do five words because they work for me. I don't believe in anything that doesn't work. I'm a very practical man. I'm not going by any academic discussion on this at all. You tell me something, it works better, I'll take it. If you have nothing better but just discussion of something, I'm not a game for that. But if you have a question, I can find an answer for you. He said, my question is, is it appropriate to speak five words representing five stages, three of which are called negative stages, or is it appropriate only to speak two words that represent the real Dyal's region, the region of our true God, our true Satpurush, should we only repeat them? I said, I will get you an answer. He said, get it. I said, you have to wait. I have to get it from my master. I don't give replies without going it to my master. I've never done that. So take my time, take your time. I'll go to my master and find out. He says, your master is dead. He died in 1948. I said, I didn't see that. I didn't see when he died. I saw his body passing away, but I saw him more alive after that. He's much more alive today than he ever was. And he talks much better, more closely to me today than he ever did before. How can I call him dead? Things were going well. DJ was enjoying it too, until he invited us all out to lunch at his local, where he tried to push a chopstick through the table. He couldn't get it through the formica surface, so he came up through an inch of wood from underneath. Not only did he draw his own blood, but a chopstick splinter had caught Allison here between the eyes, drawing more. The incident was laughed off apologetically, but next morning he was a different man, drawn and upset. He said he'd been visited all night by his long dead master, raging that he'd broken the strict taboos of his sect, never to show off in public and never to cause harm or draw blood. He felt deeply chastised. All further testing and filming must end. Never again would he submit to public scrutiny, nor accept any new students. He would sink from sight and continue his healing in obscurity, as he had done since before we met him in the early 80s and had always told us was right. He's much more alive today than he ever was. And he talks much better, more closely to me today than he ever did before. How can I call him dead? But anyway, it is true that if I had not met him, I would not have this experience. But that's a different matter. anyway, it is true that if I had not met him, I would not have this experience. But that's a different matter. I have to contact him. So he said, when will you do it? I said, well, it takes time, you know, to go to one master all the way. Maybe he's resting in such kind or what. I made a story. <laughs> and I said, but I'll get you an answer in a few weeks. 
in a few weeks he met me and I said, I got the answer. Simple answer he gave. He said, he gave a physical answer. He said, if you have a staircase against a wall, you want to go to the top, can you go to the top by only climbing the top two steps? Or do you have to take all the steps? If we are trapped in the lowest level of the negative power, can we jump up to the top without going through his regions? Not possible. Therefore, we speak the five names. And then he got convinced and he said, okay, now I know we have to go through these regions before we reach our own region, so I'll start the five names. I'm correcting this impression many people have. And then, it, as I told you the story of Jesus Christ being locked up in a bathroom, I thought that was a joke. But there was a friend of mine who many people know, know him. He and I were traveling sometimes and he would sometimes go and uh, he, he went to one of the spiritual societies we were going to. And there uh, he had a very beautiful inner experience. How did he have the experience? Because he said, is it easy to have the experience? I didn't see anything, I just nodded. Yes, it's easy. He immediately got the experience. So he said, it is the nod that counts. Nothing else matters except nod. So unless you get the nod, nothing happens. <laughs> then he asked me a question. He said, is it the nod that works? I said, I can't give you an answer. I have to check with my master. He said, check quickly, check it, give me. I said, give me some time. He said, all right, you can't check in front of me. I said, no, I must get some privacy. I should at least go to the bathroom. <laughs> I went to the bathroom and came back and gave him the answer. That happened so many years ago and that friend of mine still believes I can only meet my master in the bathroom. <laughs> True story. <laughs> we were talking before this break about meditation. There's a third factor which perfect living masters tell us during initiation. And that is the factor of dhyan, contemplation. Contemplation of the form of the master. Why do we do that? Firstly, to block any other images coming. Because the mind, you know, when it can't find words to disturb us, starts disturbing us with images of various kinds of other people whom we have known, and sometimes images of people we have never known. Particularly in meditation, you will see new faces come up in front of you. You say, we've never seen these faces and they float in front of you from left to right, and they're just floating across. And you wonder who these are. They are actually the faces of people you have known in prior lives. And you have not seen them now, therefore you don't recognize them. But those faces are also distracting. Therefore, dhyan, contemplation of the face of your master who initiates you, helps you to block that. Because you actually imagine the face of the master. In course of time, this dhyan, imagining the face of the master, becomes a permanent feature. And when it becomes permanent, and you are sure it is the face of the master, then you can check out if it was made up by your imagination or really master manifesting in your meditation. And though that is checked up because of the mantra words, the words of Simran, a master gives you, and charges them with this power. It's individually charged for each individual initiate. It's not a general thing that there are charged words in the, there are no charged words existing. All words that are spoken are not charged. Only when a master initiates you for your sake, for that individual's sake, when he tells you, repeat these five words, he charges them with the power to distinguish between an imaginary master that you can see and the real master if he manifests. So you have a very quick way of judging. So you have a very quick way of judging. So when initiated, you have a very good guarantee that you can always know whether your mind is making up something or really the master is manifesting. 
once you practice this dhyan sufficiently, you will get this opportunity to check if that's the form of the master or you're just making it up. And once it is the form of the master, after checkup, you can talk to the master, get answers within, and have a permanent companionship and friendship that will never disappear after that. Any time you'll close your eyes, he'll be there. Later on, without closing your eyes, he'll be there. You'll see him with you. You'll be driving your car, he'll be sitting next to you. You'll be walking, he'll be walking with you. You'll be flying in the sky, he'll fly with you. You'll doing anything, he's with you. He'll hold your hand and take you back to your true home, stage by stage, through all the five stages.